we're going to take a look at the EO month function in Google Sheets. What it does is it takes a starting date and then it takes a number by which to go forward or backward and then it returns the last day of that month. It sounds a little bit obscure. If you work with dates a fair amount in spreadsheets, you very well may have come across a need to do this and had no idea this function was there, so you ended up doing some sort of workaround. That was probably more complicated and didn't work as well. This function's smart enough where it knows the number of days in every calendar day, it knows leap year, etc. Oh, I have a working example of it. If we want to return the 13th month after May 17th, 2017, I've typed it in here. Starting day, number of months, easy. One thing to keep in mind that this number is 13.6, it truncates it, it doesn't round it, so that's still gonna be 13. Why it does it like that, I don't know, but um, you should know that, because that's uh, it's not what I would have expected it to do. Another thing to notice when you look at this formula is that when you're putting in the dates, you have three options. You can put quotes around it, you can use the date function inside here, or you can reference a cell into which you have a date. If you reference a cell, the cell in that date doesn't have to have quotes, but if you type it right in, it does. If I take the quotes off, you're gonna see what it tries to do is, it, it just thinks I'm doing division. It thinks EO month, five divided by 17, divided by 2017, 13. So it doesn't work. Well, it thinks it worked, but it didn't give you what you wanted. And another little tip that might help you out in understanding this is that's showing a date, but in spreadsheets, they're all actually just numbers. That's really 43,281. But because you are using a date function, the spreadsheet's smart enough to format it like a date so you can see it that way. I think this is a good example of where you may use the EO month function. Say for example, you have an HR department and a lot of your benefits go into effect on the last day of the month, say two months after someone starts. Well, if you use the EO month function, then you can have a list of the, this, the uh, eligibility dates for these employees. So if one started on January 13th, one started on January 30th, both of them will become eligible on the same day and this and this formula is going to figure that out for you. I think I think that's pretty handy. It saves a lot of time. And you can see here to input the date I use the cell reference. There's no quote. You don't need any quotes if you do it that way.